What we have here are two functions, an exponential function with a base of 2 and a log function with a base of 2. And you know that these are inverse functions. In fact, most of what we can use about logarithms comes quickly from the fact that it's the inverse function of the more familiar exponential function. What I'm going to do is, since I plan to graph these on the same graph, I'm going to plug in some convenient values for x over here. And I could start with 0, 2 to the 0 power, while well, everything to the 0 power is 1. 2 to the first power is 2. 2 to the second power is 4. 2 to the third power is 8. Those are easy enough to come up with. I also want to venture into the negatives a little. Negative 1 means you have 1 factor of 2, but it's in the denominator. So 1 half. I'm going to skip negative 2 and go to negative 3. This means that you have 3 factors of 2, but they're in the denominator. So you have 1 eighth. And shortly I'm going to graph this, but before I do, I want to exploit the fact that the log function is the inverse. It undoes whatever the original function did. If the original function turned a negative 3 into a 1 eighth, the inverse function will turn a 1 eighth into a negative 3. And so on. The 1 half will be turned back into the negative 1, the 1 back into the 0. Notice, not a particularly difficult problem once you realize what the inverse function does. 8 and 3. So now I have some convenient values to plot. I'm going to plot them here. The 1 I'm going to uh, put in red. Get some variety going here. This guy, the exponential function, if x is negative 3, that puts me over here. I have a y value that is 1 eighth. Each tick stands for 1, so I'm only going 1 eighth of that distance up. So it's, I don't know, this isn't, I don't, th I think I'm going to go back to black and white here. Okay. It's 1 eighth. I have to label this guy. All right. Negative 1 has a value of 1 half. 0 has a value of 1. In fact, with each step I take, I put in another factor of 2, so I'm doubling the height of the predecessor. This goes to a 2. This goes to a 4. This goes to an 8, and I've pretty much run out of space. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So this is the graph of my exponential function. This is, I called it f of x. OK, well, this is f of x. That's the graph. This one, where is it going? Notice with each step I take to the left, I have one fewer factors of 2. It's like I'm dividing by 2 as I move to the left. But no matter how many times I divide a positive number by 2, I still get a positive number. So this graph is going to start hugging the x-axis, but it's never actually going to reach the x-axis. It's just going to look mighty close. OK, how about the, the log function? Now, if x is 1 eighth, there I am. The y value is negative 3. Puts me down here. <clears throat> if x is 1 half, the y value is negative 1. If x is 1, y is 0. x is 2, y is 1. x is 4, y is 2. x is 8, y is 3. So it puts me right about up there. The graph, just as this never quite reaches here, notice I will never have zero or negatives here. I will never have zeros or negatives here. The inputs to the log function have to be positive numbers, 
So although we get very close to the axis, we never quite reach it. Yeah, not a great looking graph. Yeah, close enough. This is, this is my log function, which I've identified as function g. But this fact that these are inverse functions is really at the heart of what we know about log functions. And we'll find that we need to know some of the properties of log functions.